The James Webb Space Telescope has taken its final form. NASA says the $10 billion observatory finished deploying all of its parts over the weekend. Engineers opened the telescope's giant 21-foot gold-plated mirror Saturday. NASA unfurled the Webb's tennis court-sized sunshield last week. The whole operation was a bit like a butterfly coming out of its cocoon and opening up its wings. Next up, getting the device calibrated and sending data back home. We have plans for the first year. We have things that we think we'll see. We think we'll see the first galaxies. Um, we, we will characterize the atmospheres of exoplanets, but we will find new things that we have no idea exists right now. And I'm so excited to find out what that is. For more on that excitement, I want to bring in CBS News senior space analyst Bill Harwood. Bill, great to see you. How well do these maneuvers go? It, it was really something incredible happening out there in space. Yeah, you know, it really was. And, and I'll confess, going into this mission, based on more than 30 years of covering NASA and the space program, I didn't think they'd ever get to this point without running into at least one major snag or at least a series of minor snags. I mean, that kind of thing is to be expected in complicated space missions. But this thing went off without a hitch. Uh, I was as astonished as everyone else, and I think the astronomical community was thrilled. I mean, elation's too, too mild a word for the web to get to this point in such good shape. You know, it's got that huge sun shield now fully deployed. The optical system is fully deployed. Uh, and while those are major hurdles, no question, uh, the, you know, it's not over yet. They've still, as you said, They've got to get these instruments calibrated, get the, the mirror segments aligned so that it's focusing properly and all of that. That's going to take weeks more, uh, but so far so good. It's a huge relief. So in a couple of weeks, might we start to see some of those images? No, actually it's going to be about six months. I think it's probably going to be in the June time frame before we see images. And, and you know, if you think about it, that mirror, that gold-plated mirror we talked about, it's made up of 21 segments. Each one of those segments now has to be aligned. If you just look through the telescope right now, you'd see 18 images of a star instead of one image. So each one of those segments has six actuators on the back. They've got another actuator that can change the shape. So each one of these segments, they can tilt, tip, move it in and out, whatever is required, so that at the end of this long process, those 18 images I mentioned will be merged into one precisely focused image. That's where they've got to get. And that's, that's just in the mirror system. Then they've got to calibrate these four instruments that are on board that are going to do the actual science, get all that stuff fine-tuned and ready to go. Uh, and, of course, then, only then, will we see the first science images. You know, I, I confess I did know that it's still months away. I guess I'm just impatient. <laughs> Um, tell us, we Bill, how are. significant is this mission? <laughs> how significant is this mission to NASA and to space exploration? I think it's huge. You know, if you go back to uh, the first Hubble repair mission, if you remember back in the early 90s when the Hubble Space Telescope was launched with that perfectly flawed mirror, going into that flight, there were people who argued that if NASA couldn't pull that off, there was, there was doubt about congressional support for space station and other big projects. Um, I don't know that it was that severe with Webb, but at $10 billion, uh, you know, there is an enormous amount of pressure on NASA to make it work. If, if something like this didn't work, I think it would have a long-ranging impact on future, what NASA calls flagship missions, the really big expensive science missions. It would make, uh, you know, the lawmakers more hesitant to fund these, these big ticket items. And so, so the pressure is there, and, and that's just on the political side of the coin. When you look at the science that they're hoping to get out of this, you know, Webb is doing research, or will be doing research, that no ground-based telescope can do. Uh, so, so there's a lot of, uh, as, as, as we just heard, there's huge interest in the astronomical community to get this telescope up and running. Uh, Bill, we've spoken about this before, but it's worth mentioning. The Hubble telescope is still in orbit with its eye open. What does NASA hope to do with it? You know, it's really interesting. This is one of the things they've been looking forward to for a long, long time. You know, Hubble is fine-tuned uh, to look at the visible light spectrum, the, the radiation you and I can see with our eyes. You can see a little bit into the ultraviolet and a little bit into the infrared. Webb, of course, extends that vision deeper into the infrared. 
And so the goal here is to use both these telescopes at the same time, looking at the same targets across that wide range of spectral wavelengths. And if you can do that, you're going to get a lot of insights into how some uh, very basic processes work out there in terms of uh, the nebula, the, the stellar nurseries, you know, that, that give birth to stars and solar systems, mm. that sort of thing. I think, you know, there's a lot of interest in seeing these guys work side by side. And Hubble, as you know, is 31 years old. So the clock's ticking on Hubble. Uh, so the sooner they can get Webb up and running and use these guys in concert, uh, the better for everybody. Looking forward to seeing those images, those untold mysteries of the galaxy that will be returned to us here on Earth. Bill Harwood, thank you. My pleasure.